Disengagement, the beginning of the end for love relationships. A third of still together couples report loneliness in their relationship. That's on surveys, but that's only part of it. The leading cause of divorce is not abuse or infidelity. It's disengagement. Disengagement causes resentment. Partners typically resent that there's too much work, you're never home, hanging with friends, phone or screen time, hobbies, alcohol, too much other things, not enough us. Couples get stuck on a treadmill with this complaint, though it's perfectly justified. The treadmill is that resentment causes disengagement. So you get resentful about disengagement and then it's very hard to engage with resentful people. I got caught on this treadmill early in my marriage because my wife got her advanced degrees before I did because one of us had to work while the other studied. Uh, and she was on an accelerated course so she was either in class or in the library, it was before online research, uh, most of the time. And I would resent that she wasn't home very much. Uh, I was feeling unimportant, disregarded. Uh, and then I began to notice, since you know psychology was my field, that the more resentful I got, the less she would come home. You know, she would come home later and later. Uh, so just as an experiment, I tried being very pleasant and loving when she got home without ever mentioning it, that I was trying to uh, get her to want to be home more. And lo and behold, she was home more. You know, she checked things out of the library more and would study at home. So we could at least engage about that. And that reminds me of a tale of two cats. I used to have two cats. Both loved to get on my lap and get petted. When I got distracted or for any reason stopped petting my Siamese, he bit me. Not usually really hard, but enough to be pretty uncomfortable. When I got distracted or for any reason stopped petting my vermin, she licked my hand, rubbed against my chest, looked lovingly into my eyes. Which do you think got petted more? Now, I'm not saying we have to be like cats. We have to be loving when we're not engaged, but we have to seek engagement. And that's really focusing on what you want, not on what you don't want. What you don't want is disengagement, so don't focus on that. Focus on getting engaged. You want your partner to be interested in you and compassionate to you. That means you need to be interested in and compassionate to your partner. I can't tell you how many relationships I've seen in couples counseling where, where the complaint was disengagement and one partner saying that the, uh, the other never talks. And then the other says, well, you never want to talk about what I want to talk about. You have to talk about what interests your partner, even when it doesn't interest you. In other words, you're interested that your partner is interested rather than what your partner is interested in. Negotiate from the deepest common value. You both want a close, connected relationship. Decide together what you can each do to get there. Now the key is don't focus on what your partner's doing wrong, all the too much less. Criticism doesn't make anyone feel connected. Focus on what you can both do to feel more connected. Now, if resentments become chronic, 
uh, if that's the dominant emotion in your relationship, these little adjustments aren't going to be enough. So you have to look at our boot camp uh, at CompassionPower.com.